Joe's Longworth. I, I worked as a botanist for the um, Forest Service for 11 years and I've been studying plants since I was 12 years old because they fascinate me and I just, I enjoy them. So I've been doing edible medicinal plants just, and then I, if I break into Latin, I apologize because sometimes I know the Latin name and I have to think about the English, the English name, the, the real name. And um, so we're just gonna go over just basic med edible medicinal plants and then we're gonna take a little walk and find them and I'll answer any questions you guys got. I've got extra books over there if anybody wants to get, glance through them. I just threw them in so that I had them. This is, this is my go-to guide. It's Edible and Medicinal Plants of the Rockies um, by Linda Kershaw. It's Seen Better Days. I've had it a long time. Um, I suggest any, for any amateur, get a picture guide. They're, they're worth their weight in gold because you can glance through and look at photo references and once you get better at identifying plants it's what you can you can cover way more things but the picture guide for amateurs is the way to go so I've collected a few plants just by the pickup here <coughs> this one here um, have you guys covered plants at all we just starting okay this is yarrow and um, you guys use it a lot in yes. different tinctures and such. Um, one of the just fun things about it, if you take a leaf off and you rub it and smell it, just pass it around and smell it. It's a natural mosquito repellent. This plant was also known as soldier's oh. wound wart. <laughs> the reason it was called soldier's wound wart is because they would pack it into um, a, bleeding wound. a bleeding wound or a wound to keep it from getting um, infected. Um, there's a story that... I've been told, and it's kind of just been passed down. Where's my other child? <laughs> yeah, is um, there was a mountain man that was seven days ride back into the mountains, and he was he got in a skirmish with an Indian and got shot in the guts. He took yarrow and he packed the the bullet wound full of yarrow, and um, by the time he rode into the net town. The wound was not infected. In fact, it was starting to heal, even with the bullet in there. So this is a really powerful um, anti-inflammatory um, and antibacterial plant. It's definitely one to know, and it's super easy to identify. It likes dry sites. It, these flowers will open up into a beautiful white little bunch, cluster of white flowers. So I'll pass that it, one around. It's also an astringent, so it stops exactly. bleeding. Exactly. Yes, I was looking for that word too, but my I got two hours of sleep last night, so my brain's a little bit gone today. <laughs> and I'll blame that on the child that just disappeared. Guys, so this is another plant that many of you might know. Yeah. Um, this is red clover. Um, Swanee also uses this. And I think she uses it in her uh, blood lymph detox. She uses it in her triple tincture. You can eat the leaves, you can make them into tea, you can eat the blooms, and it is a, it's just a neat little plant to have around. Um, very good on the blood, very high in vitamins, and slightly astringent as well. I mean, you can, you taste it, you can, you know it's astringent when you taste it. So, this is another one. Um, this is used in urinary health. This is cleavers, or um, some people call it sticky weeds, some people call it bed straw. But because um, they used to stuff it in mattresses because it had a, when it dries, it has a light vanilla smell. So, and it would help with the allergens in the uh, feather beds. So they'd stuff it in mattresses. And it's for um, urinary health, such as infections and um, chronic problems. This is a, really a good plant to have around. And you, it's called cleavers because it sticks onto things. That's the best thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, me and my kids have had had cleaver wars because you can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good for lymphatic fluid, right? Well, you know what? It tastes good too. It does. It's very tasty. It's used as a trail nibble, and I have I have to trail nibble. I yes. like that. Concept. It's a snack. It's a it's yeah. a, it's, it's, it's got, got, yes. You can eat that. Yes. It was even um, clean to my This tongue. is my little plant boy. He eats everything. Oh. <laughs> There's been a couple cases where they weren't plants necessarily he should be eating. Oh. Um, this is one of the native clovers. Um, this is just another, it's just like the red clover, has very similar properties. I think you know what that one is. Mm -hmm. And this, and so this one is, um, I think it's called Virginia White. 
is the is the I can't remember the Latin name, but it it's one of the natives ones. So it's same family, same properties as the red clover. And this right here is a very powerful um, anti bruise, anti um, inflammatory. You can buy it in creams. You can buy it in tabulated forms. This is arnica. This okay. is arnica um, cordifolia, heartleaf arnica, which has very similar properties to ar fun. arnica montana. And Where arnica, did you find that? it was just over by yeah. that tree. Okay. There's, it's all over through here. This has got the red base with um, little hairs. I know it's over here, so we'll go back over here while I cut it. And it likes shady spots. It likes um, no disturbance. And so it's all over in here. And it goes right over into underneath that tree. This is Pathfinder. And it's called Pathfinder because if you walk on it and you flip a leaf over, it's silver. So you can see where somebody walked. Um, a tenno column bicolor is the Latin name. Or or in Pathfinder's it's common name. It was, the leaves were crushed to use as a poultice to keep out infection and such. Um, the big, it's big claim to fame is you can track people through it because of the silver back of the leaf. Um, because once it gets turned, it stays. Yeah, and so you can see where somebody walked over. I mean, I like the Lone Pine Publisher books. There, there's all sorts of them because oh. they're easy. Like the Northwest Coast has some of the medicinal values. Plants of the Rocky Mountains, not so much. Uh, Linda Kershaw actually co-wrote this one, but this is her her book that she did just as a basic photo reference. This okay. is this is burdock or cockleburr as it's locally known. Um, it has dog hair on it because I have dogs. Um, the leaves are were often used as a wrap for like meat or vegetables to roast because it kept the moisture in. It huh. sealed up. Um, the root was chopped and stir fried. Um, but probably one of the biggest claim to fame for this little plant is its um, usefulness in urinary tra tract health and as blood purifier. Correct. And um, so I mean the the first year plants and it's a it's a biennial meaning it takes two years to flower so this is a first year plant so the roots were often chopped and stir fried they'd eat them raw they met mash them and basically use them like a potato mm -hmm. anything you could do with a potato you could do with a burdock Japanese eat them all the time yep and then the leaves were just I'm not going to eat it because I don't know what dog um, used it as a bathroom break but the leaves are used as a trail nibble they're edible and actually quite tasty mm-hmm so even the root is it i think it's better than potato i think it is too it doesn't have that real starchy uh -huh. um well, after in central america mm -hmm. that had wounds mm -hmm. that would not heal and she yeah. had them for a long while mm -hmm. and once we started putting those or leaves like those on there mm -hmm. it came out to total um skin surface oh wow and we're healing see on and this book just as a reference we're going to go to burdock since we just talked about it 170. Great picture references. It shows them flowering. They've got the little artichoke like flowers. In fact, Even the cockleburs. Yeah. And so, okay, so medicine. Widely used as blood purifying tonic. Still yep. recommended, but in a safe, powerful liver tonic. Um, used as medicinal trees for treating gout, liver, kidney problems, mm -hmm. rheumatism, vertigo, high blood pressure, measles, and gonorrhea. The leaves were used as poultice for healing burns, or ulcers, and sores, just as uh, Swanee was talking about. The teas and washes for treating hair life, hair loss, <laughs> hair life, <laughs> hives, eczema, psoriasis, and skin infections. The seeds were used in washes and poultices for treating bruises, abscesses, and insect bites. I forgot about that one. Oh, um, wow. And scarlet fever and smallpox. They were said to stimulate urination and be used to treat water retention with high uric acid levels. The roots were oh, boiled. Right. To make an antidote to use for poisonous food. Now I have used this as an antidote. We had a litter of puppies actually that um, one of our neighbors had poisoned and I did use burdock, I used rose, I used um, strawberry, Oregon grape and a bunch of different um, plants and I made up a tea and I just offered it to them free choice which they actually drank it and those that did lived. Mm. So I mean it, it really is good for that stuff as well. So it's also used to dissolve bladder stones and stimulate liver and kidney and bile function. Mm -hmm. And inhib inhibit mutations and slow tumor growth and relieve really? water t retention. Yeah. So it's just really one of those plants that everybody hates, but it's really a good one to have around. I, Dave, I, I get a guilty stop? conscience every time I weed eat one. Well, you can irrigate wounds with them. 
when you can't get anything else in there. Like if you have a hole down deep in the body, you just take a syringe and that mm -hmm. tea and just shove it down in there and uh -huh. let it drain out and it heals nice. You brought me, it's called Miner's Lettuce. And just as it sounds, it's, I don't believe it's in this one. It's just, it was a little pot herb. You, Spinach-like leaves, real um, yeah. succulent and f fleshy, mm -hmm. and it's just everybody gets to taste one. I don't know about um, medicinal uses so much as just it was a pot herb, meaning they put it in their pot and, and it ate literally it. tastes like spinach. It's yeah. a little more flavorful, you but can mix that along with it. yes. Anybody, anybody else want to taste? And this one is. Probably one of the most useful weeds you'll find, that Sean. Absolutely. La this is lance leaf plantain. There's also Plantago major, which is the broadleaf plantain. Um, same medicine, medicinal properties. That this just is different genus, not genus species. And one of the big ways to di identify plantain is the strings. Oh yes. If you break a leaf and you pull it and it pulls out with these strings, with these strings were used as as cordage by some of the natives. But this oh, little, really? yeah, they would they would pull them and then they would twist them oh, and then double twist them and then okay. it was a twine oh, a rope. Huh. Um, this plant is great for it's antimicrobial, antibacterial, um, and just a good skin plant. Is it viral and, and fungal as well? Anti I believe so, yes. Mm. Um, you can chew one of these leaves if you get a yellow jacket sting and put it directly on the yellow jacket sting. It'll draw the poison out. Mm. And the other thing you can do with this is infected wound. I was, um, when I was about 13, I was, I was studying with a group of Coeur d'Alene Indians and we were, ta we were talking plants and me being a 13 year old person, I'm just super excited that they're going to share with some of the plants with me. And this is one of the ones I remember even then. The, the gal was talking about um, getting a big cut on her back and it started to get infected. And she said the only thing she could find that she could put back there was plantain. So she took the leaves and as a poultice, just steamed them and then put them over the wound and then taped them on. And every, twice a day, she'd pull off those plantain leaves, and all the infection would be stuck to the leaf. Mm -hmm. And she'd throw it away and change it, and mm -hmm. it and it healed up all the way. Cool. And just an, and it another one you can eat. It does. It's pretty good tasting. The landslide plantain is actually I don't think as astringent as the um the broadleaf, broadleaf plantain. Thank you, Swanee. Mm -hmm. This is the rose bush, it's wild rose, edible. Mm -hmm edible the leaves are edible the the rose hips are edible the petals are edible in fact they make a lovely jelly if you and the the petals were used for treating um colic and gastrointestinal problems um and yeah, it's real soothing on the stomach um, and so and then high in vitamins another one food most of the shrubs are edible the hips can eat being fresh, dried jellies, jams, and I've used them all ways, and they, they are just tasty. They're a little sour because they're very high in vitamin C, but they're very, very good, good for good, you. Good, good, good. They're used as a famine food. They were used to treat scurvy when oranges and uh, lemons and limes were not available, citrus fruits. Um, mm -hmm. The buds and the young shoots were eaten raw, like the one I shoved in the kid's hat that walked off. They're very high in A, B, K, and E vitamins. And, and they're not mutated, they're not hybridized, and, and your body no. digests every bit of them and gets it yep, in. Yep, the, the body absorbs it. Okay. During World War II, when oranges couldn't be imported, British and Scandinavian people collected hundreds of rose hips to make syrup. The vitamin C of the hips were used uh, as a natural um, uh, vitamin C source. Stems and root bark were used to relieve diarrhea and stomach upset and reduce pain. I was mentioning that I made that... Um, a detox tea for the dogs that had been poisoned because our neighbor wasn't being very nice at that point and they were used to uh, reduce labor pain as well as an eye wash for treating snow really? blindness yeah. strawberry and rose the rose family are real mild so they can be used on the mucous membranes like the eye and so snow blindness cataracts you can use it as a wash to help treat that which ones is it again the rose and what strawberry, strawberry. which strawberry. is in the rose yeah, family yeah. Well, and it decreases labor pain? Yes. Wow. The rose uh, decontoxin, hot, hot compresses were used to do, reduce swelling, gargle, 
in treatment for mouth bleeding, tonsillitis, and sore throat. Although it still hasn't helped Finn. Who knows what his issue is? <laughs> he needs his immune system. Yeah, he does. The leaves were boiled to make a wash for strengthening babies. Petals were taken for colic, heartburn, headaches, and mouth sores. They were also ground and mixed in grease as a salve for mouth sores and mixed with wine to make a medicine for leaving earaches, toothaches, and uterine cramps. Wow. Cooked seeds were eaten to relieve sore muscles, probably because of the availability of nutrients. Hmm. It'd be minerals too. Is, uh, exactly. Because mm. they have such a deep root system, they're oh. able to pull all the micronutrients up gotcha. from from bar down. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go find some more plants. Um, the grasses, Swanee was asking about the grasses earlier. Um, a lot of them, I haven't studied them as, as much as I've studied the other plants, but mostly the seeds were eaten to uh, in porridges, stews, or dried and ground into flours for thickening stews and baking. I'm really hoping to find some lamation, but so, we might have to move to there. Andy did, did a study on grasses, and she found that there was 148 different grasses in the world, mm -hmm. and wow. all of them are edible. Yes, oh, grasses right. are, and, are, and are so, widely renowned as, as the edible plant. And I've come to the conclusion that it cures insanity. You know, in the Bible it says that Nebuchadnezzar ate grass for seven years. It cures insanity. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I really like it. It makes that sense too. to me. Well, listen, how many of the grasses are completely edible as far as the fiber because some of them you don't you don't break down and digest and it can plug your bowel most of you what you're going to do is you're going to put them in your mouth and you're going to chew get the juice until and, you have and, a, a wad and then and you'll then spit that wad out. out yeah and, and then swallow. and then swallow all the juices and well, the fiber okay. is pretty hard though yeah we don't yeah, have cellulose in our body so right. we can't digest well, those hard fibers bears eat the grasses to give themselves stop themselves up so they can sleep all winter. That's one of their main fiber sources is grasses, bear grass, um, oh, this pine grass. That's why it's bear grass. That's exactly why it's bear grass because okay. bear grass was also used as a, um, as a weaving for cordage and weaving, weaving uh, baskets. Okay. Waterproof. Um, uh, when coated with pine tar. Okay. We might have to move out to the edge where we have a little more sunshine because we're just getting back into the same stuff. This little guy right here, since, since it's here, is is also known as a um, just a fun little plant. This is this is honeysuckle. Sorry. The flowers are often eaten oh, for the honey in it. Um, I didn't recognize that as honeysuckle. This is a baby honeysuckle. But the opposite leaves and the very oval-shaped leaves uh -huh. is very typical of honeysuckle. Okay. And... Um, I don't know of the medicinal. I could look it up, but but edible. They yeah. just eat, you eat the. I was in my book. I've got one that talks about it. It, it is medicinal in certain aspects. I know I it know is, what. but I can't remember what it Maybe is. Either. After a while, I have to remind myself by checking. Oh, really? That's a, that's that's a baby service, service berry. berry. Which one? It's it's, service it gets 20 feet tall, so that's just the little. Um, a bird sat here, and so there it is. We have a thistle here, and thistles a. Uh, are good they're, they're very high in sugar so when they come up bolt up you can peel the stems and eat the stems because they're um well they they taste like a sweet celery they're mm -hmm. a very tasty i don't remember the the edible or medicinal value of them i don't know if they're as highly regarded for medicinal as they are tasty they're the same family as the artichoke an artichoke is a thistle mm -hmm. okay so the thistle plants were used for Teas to strengthen stomach, reduce fever, kill intestinal worms, inhibit contraception, and increase chances of conceiving a male child, to increase milk supply, and as a mother's wash for um, skin ailments and leprosy sores. How is it? That's thistles. Thistle? Yeah. Yeah, blessed thistle. Yeah. That's a very strong blend. Like, it is. Really, um, even for your liver. It's very uh, tasty, too, actually, if you catch it in the right stages. If you catch this one, my favorite cat. That's the one he eats all the time. That's salsify. That one. Oh, okay. that and salsify. Can I taste your plant? Hey, can everybody grab a leaf on that. It's really a tasty little plant. Another one that tastes just like a nice green pot herb, similar to spinach. Everything tastes like spinach, just like everything tastes like chicken in the plant world. Um, one has got a white milky. Where did he find it from? It was right over there. It was grown over there. It just grows in disturbed sites. Um, it was actually brought here as a garden plant and then it's naturalized. Um, Salsify, huh? Yep. And 
the Sounds root is can be peeled and and mm -hmm. uh, used just Put like a par parsnip. Mm -hmm. And the the stem, it's high stem, in vitamins. Stem. The entire plant's edible. Interesting. Sword. 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 It's sure milky. It is, but you would think the Sword. milk would give it a better taste, but it, it really doesn't. Sword. Okay, so medicinal, they were used to relieve heartburn and stimulate urination. Hmm. Well, that's yarrow in full bloom. In fact, why don't you so bring that over and we'll kidneys. show it to everybody because that's a good... Down the flower is, is pink. pink. Yeah, it can be pink, it can be red, it can be yellow, it can be blue. Mm -hmm. But native here is the white. Um, it's it? used as a uh, wound to dressing to stop the oozing and bleeding of sores. Mm -hmm. Used as a drink or a lotion to treat bites of coyotes on both humans and livestock. So it, hmm. it's got to have some sort of antimicrobial. That's the service berry as well. And I believe the leaves are edible, the berries are edible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people pronounce it service berry. Service berry, service berry, it's all the same. Um, this has got a great taste. Used, uh, I thought Sarsberry's everything in the wild was bitter and nasty. They also called it Saskatoons. They used it in pemmican, which is a mix of uh, dried powdered meat, fruit, and lard. Sounds lovely. <laughs> but it's high in calories, and they could use it as a um, just a a full meal. Oh, and I see one right by your foot, Swanee, that I'm going to want to pull as well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Okay, so on... on before I go to this one, I'm going to um, say on the Saskatoon, it was used to uh, relieve upset stomachs. They were used to make eye drops and teas for mist, to prevent miscarriages. They were, uh, the inner bark was used to help in the delivery of afterbirth. And the Saskatoon sh uh, sticks were used to puncture and drain abscesses really? in horses and livestock. Sorry, because it wasn't um, considered to be toxic. Wow. It would help the in, in the healing. That's this thing here? No, that's the Saskatoon, the service berry. Oh, 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 oh. The salsify was just used as a parsnip and, and pot herb. Okay. Where's the yes. Saskatoon? He's got a pe oh. one right there. Saskatoon. Yes. Okay. And here's another salsify right here. Mommy, what kind of bug is that? Mm -hmm. The whole bush is over Keep your there. hands off of it, please. Um, let's see, we covered all that. Okay, now this is Hypericum perforatum. <laughs> Otherwise known as St. John's Wort. Sorry, I told you I'd break into Latin and there was no guarantees I could remember the common name, but I, I got it. Now this one Swanee uses a lot in her um, herbal tinctures and such. Antiviral. Antiviral, antimicrobial, um, antidepressant. The only side effect with this little guy is that it can cause um, ease of sunburning. I had a horse who used to love this plant, except for she was a pink horse, and so she had a very, very pink face. Oh my! So as soon as she the the hypericum came up, she would come over and she would just get these boils and blisters on her face. Wow! Because because it was a photosensitivity. But um, what's positive ideas to take a leaf? Hold it up. And hold it up and look black, black specks. Well, you can see black specks and you can see holes. Yep, because the holes are in the center of the black specks, correct? Oh, yep. So that's how you identify it easily. Yes, and it gets a big cluster of yellow flowers. And there's no other leaf that has those holes in the nope. spots. It's very one of those positive identification. Um, what's what's it more uses though, of it, Swami? Um, well, you we use it mostly antiviral. Mm -hmm. Anything you where you need to strengthen and in. help the immune system mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And if you have um, fungus and yeast in your gut, it's a great one this is to Saint help John's get rid of it. Word. Yes, that's correct. Um, it's also used for mood enhancement and, that's right. and uh, some um, hormonal imbalances. Yes. Oh, really? I didn't know that one. Mood enhancement, I forgot, but yeah. Yes, because it, it was, in it's fact, a very powerful antidepressant. In fact, in some uh, studies when I was going to the University of Idaho, since I studied rangeland management and botany, they were feeding it to sheep and goats to improve um, their overall vitality. Mm -hmm. And it was working. Sad sheep. Yeah, that's right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and nobody <laughs> wants a sad <laughs> sheep. <laughs> well, you know, another thing that you should know about it is, um, 
the Bible's promised us a uh, sound mind. Mm -hmm. This really helps to create a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it's, it defogs your brain. Yes. It clears your, your um, focus. And when somebody has been on antipsychotic medications, they say, oh, don't take this. Well, the reason why is because it negates what they're doing and allows your brain to heal. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's very powerful for brain function. I, I use it just in a lot of, and like you said, the antiviral, I use it in a lot of my tinctures just as a dressing to help help the other herbs um, do what they do. And this is a rose made out of a... No, this is snow, <laughs> snow, a snowberry, an immature plant of snowberry. Oh, that's a snowberry now, plant? snowberry are toxic. They're a pretty little plant. They have a beautiful white berry, but they yes. are toxic. And how about going through the skin? I don't think, no. You don't eat it. Just don't, don't eat it. Any what? use for this at all? Um, I'm not it to makes my beautiful wreaths. It does. It? Because the little white berries that grow on it. Snowberry. snowberry. And it's called snowberry just because it has a beautiful snow white berry. The grouse love them. Grouse and deer eat them almost exclusively. Yeah, if you eat it, you're gone. Yes, they'll, they'll give you really bad gastrointestinal distress and, and vomiting. Oh, wow. That's what they used to say about Lobelia, too. I Stay away from snowberry. Let's see. Yeah. I think I actually have a they have, The plant contains an alkaloid called oh. chelidonine. Chelidonine? Yes, and which can cause vomiting, diarrhea, depression, and sedation. One child who ate the berries reportedly came, became nauseous, delirious, and fell into a semi-comatose state. Most tribes considered snowberries poisonous. Some people believe that the ghosts of Saskatoons were a part of no, that's just, yeah, well, well there's part of my book. <laughs> everybody says it is a wonderful weed. However, it's very, very useful. Um, this is mullen. Um, I didn't need to get my roll out, did I? No. <laughs> it's used as a natural toilet paper is what Swanee's referring to <laughs> because of the fuzzy little leaves. Um, it's used, it has properties that are... Mullen used for um um uh, i just lost it it's it's, it's used, mucilogenic it's mu it? thank you mucilogenic and it's um helps with asthma and um allergies and respiratory in respiratory stuff um so you boil the leaves right yes and you make a tea yes let's see if i can find it real quick to remind myself but um this one is um was also used as a fish stunner by some of the native tribes. In fact, that's why what? stunner. Really? So if you take large amounts of these leaves and you put them in like a pool or something, it will cause a 30 second float on the fish so you can pick out whatever you want. So it was a neurotoxin to the fish so they would they would par be paralyzed for 30 seconds. Wow. So it was used. I have never tried that. I've always wanted to, but I've never tried that. This, this, is a yeah. snow, this is snowberry, right? This is snowberry, that's correct. Yeah. And snowberry leaves can vary a lot in the mature, immature stage. See how this one's kind of serrate and this one's entire? It's got, it's it's not like a serrate knife. So the immature ones have, but they're always opposite. Oh, these are spittle bugs. They're a little bug that's in here and they live in their own spit and they drink plant juices. And so you have little bugs in there. The spittle bugs, yep. not much of anything. They're good at they're good at making your um your pan pants wet when you walk through them, yeah. and they live in their own spit and drink plant juices. And this here's the yarrow. This is a good example of a bloom. As mo the case with most plants, the yarrow um all uh, is more highly concentrated in the bloom than the leaf or the or the stem. I use the leaves and or the flowers. Like when I'm out in the woods, just rub it on your hands and arms. Mm -hmm. Keep the mosquitoes off. And to make a tea out of it? And you can make a tea out of it, but it tastes awful. But it's really good for tooth infections. Oh, yeah. I make a tincture out of plantain, yarrow, and mint, which I have um, passed on to several friends of mine that, that um, well, one was working out of Alaska, didn't have access to much medical. And he's like, I have, I have a tooth infection. What can you do about it? So I sent him yarrow, plantain, and bentonite clay to pack it with, and then yarrow, plantain, and peppermint tea, or tincture. And he, he's, a, he's a German, so he, he likes alcohol. And he's, I said, don't drink too much of this. He, I said, he said, it tastes kind of bad. Well, how can you know, know that I'm not gonna drink the whole bottle? I said, I'm pretty sure you won't called me back the next day and he goes 
that by far is the most awful alcohol I've ever had in my life. I said, you're welcome. <laughs> this is a bracken fern. It are also known as fiddleheads. A lot of people eat the little immature fronds and fry them up in butter, or it's very popular among Orientals. So they wouldn't eat this part, they just eat no, this part. No, because they're actually allelopathic, which allelopathic means they produce something that kills other plants. So they, and they're considered toxic to animals. They are toxic, but they, but it's late, latest research has shown that the fiddleheads are also carcinogenic. Really? And because they put all, them in salads and things. They like are, that. but um, they've been found that there's a high rate of stomach cancers and such within Orientals that eat a lot of fiddleheads, and because of the alkaloids that the um, bracken produces. Okay. So for that reason, I've never eaten them because mm -hmm. I've never had any desire to eat something that was toxic to even a goat. <laughs> Because goats have an enlarged liver and can take just about anything. This is a chocolate lily, and that's all I know about it. <laughs> it's in the lily family, so it's edible. Most lilies are edible. Um, I don't know if I have anything uh, specifically on it, but let's let's see. So your identification would be the dark down here? No, the lily is, I know it's a lily because you can see this is the seed pod. Okay. And if you count the, um, the, uh, the wings, there's six of them. Okay. Lilies always have six petals. Okay. And when they're, then they have six um, uh, stamens. Okay. And the the one ovary. Okay. But has six compartments. Okay. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to break your little lily there. Oh, well. Let me see if I. Hey, somebody helped you with that beforehand. No, it's not on here. But I can go to the lily AC and see if. <laughs> One thing I wanted to say about anything that helps to fight infection somewhere mm -hmm. in the body you know is an immune enhancer. Correct. I, that's what we all need to comprehend so that when we're after our herbs and we're needing to help somebody strengthen their immune system, anything that fights and you, I mean, you don't have to buy a product. If you have a basic plant knowledge, you can take yarrow, you can take plantain, you can take clover, you can put nettles in there. Mm -hmm. You can make a basic Con tea concoction mm -hmm. or tincture and they to all help work together yes to help um some or add some saint john's wort yeah you can you can ha make basic plant concoctions i've done it a lot with livestock i haven't worked on it. people so much as my, but myself I, I work on myself with it and so the chocolate lily i'm going to bounce over to that before i lose my train of thought because my children are throwing sticks in the road yeah um, it's uh, in the fritillary family, which its its sister plant is this little yellow fr fritillary in the spring, also known as yellow bells. Okay. They're edible and very tasty. Whoa. In fact, they were eaten almost to extinction because of their little um, bulb was so nutty and tasty. Yeah. Um, the fleshy bulbs produce a tiny bulblet the size of a grain of rice, which has been called root rice. Both bulbs and bulblets are edible, either raw or cooked. Several tribes use these roots in the spring and boiled them alone or with bitter root and was collected at the same time. They were also steamed in pits and dried for winter use. The fruiting pods were occasionally boiled as a wild green, but not by most tribes. Lily bulbs were pulverized and used to make salves for treating tuberculosis and lymph nodes. Oh my goodness. Because they're a power lymph detox. Wow, that's what we need for our, yes. our lymph cancers. The disease was also associated with gophers and ground squirrels, and these children were warmed to keep away from the gopher mounds or they would get the swollen necks. Um, bubonic plague comes from gophers. Wow. And so you find them in the same area. So wow. that's why they used um, doctrine of signatures. That's why they used the lilies to treat the tuberculosis. Interesting. So, so they were, they were, they're also grown as just as a flower. They're called, called mission bells. They're just, one of those fun Nation? little flowers. Mission. mission. Mission, like a missionary. Oh, mission bells. Hmm. So. Hmm. No, Lamation. I've been looking for that. Oh, yeah? Yes, Lamation. Lamation trinertatum. This cute little yellow flower. Oh, there it is. Is another one of my favorites in the woods. There's about 64 different varieties of these. So this is one of them. This is trinertatum, or, or three-fingered Lamation. Um, it's also known as biscuit root. Oh, that's what that it is. It has a bulb, a tuber bulb, mm. which is used, it was used to make flour by a lot of the tribes. Okay. And yeah. so they would dig that root and dry it and powder it and use it to thicken soups or make it to ma use it as a flower. And um, the whole plant's edible. It's in the mustard family. 
the seeds were the seeds were often eaten and I'm sure I'm forgetting some of the medicinal values so I'm gonna pop over to my go-to reference and we'll go up to Lomatium. So Lomatium species 196. Quick question, does it get more yellow than this? Or it is. It's yellow. almost bloomed out. It'll be bright, bright yellow in the, um, about two weeks ago. Hey, please don't push that over on people. That's not very nice. There's a yellow one over there. Oh, yeah, there's a huh. more yellow one over oh, there the yellow one right by here. Swanee. And, okay, so desert parsley is, is a common name for it because it grows all across the northwest. It, it even grows in the desert, obviously. The leaves are have a strong parsley flavor and were often used to flavor meat and salads. And I've used it to um say as a flavoring it makes a very nice like i said parsley flavored um uh in soups and salads and such um the bitter root is had a mild the root has a mild rice-like flavor and was very popular they made it in mush breads cakes and biscuits and they also used it as a trade item um the fern-like leaves of the desert parsley were used to make medicinal trees to for for, for a general panacea by many native peoples. It was used for treating coughs, colds, sores, hay fevers, bronchitis, flu, pneumonia, and tuberculosis. It was really good for the respiratory system, it was considered. Um, some herbalists still use it because it has antibacterial, antiviral and, uh, properties for treating respiratory infections, and it helps bring up the phlegm from the lungs and, bronchi and bronchia. Extracts from the species have provo proved to be effective to combat a wide variety of bacteria in studies. That's so, cool. just a, another just if neat little plant. Just do these on a regular basis. We would get rid of those extra bacteria. And oh, absolutely. Um, I was. I talked to. I had a, a professor in um, college, and he was very. He was a plant genius. Is a plant genius. And every year, this gentleman would. Uh, go over the seven devils. He'd hike over the seven devils with some fishing line, a water bottle, a water purifier, and a knife. And that's all he would take with him. Wow. And everything he ate was plants and, um, and um, fish that he could dry on rocks. And he would usually, it would took him two to seven weeks, depending on which route he took. Every year he'd take a different route. And he said he would fast for about two days before he goes because he said if you don't fast these plants bother your digestive system and they don't taste good because our society is so geared towards sugars and uh, fats and salt so he would fast for two days and then he would start out he would eat i don't i haven't seen it around here but balsam arises agitata arrow leaf balsam root he would eat biscuit root he would eat licorice root he would um Eat the desert parsleys. There should be a tuber further down if you want to keep digging. I, that's what I was wondering is how far down was the tuber because um, I thought it was just like an and inch underneath. There is no. It's usually about a foot, foot and a half down. You'll see them on the embankments. That they'll be big, ferny looking plants with the big yellow umbel flowers. Right. And those are also, but they have the bigger root. Okay. The littler. I mean, you. Yeah, you obviously, have, it'd probably be about the size of a marble. Or yeah, if you kept going. Right. That's what um, I was looking for. A foot, yeah. foot to two feet. Uh, that, gonna... That's why these plants ha are so concentrated in nutrients is they have deep root systems. There's there's a can, bunch of different kinds of clover, food. actually. This is um, Trifolium repens, which is white clover. We looked at red clover. There's alcide clover. <laughs> there's about six different um, varieties of clover. Right here in this book, it just covers three of them. But um, you'll find them all over, and there's there's hybridized varieties of clovers because they're used in hays and such. So what's the difference between this one and that one? Aha! Uh -huh. This is um, a pine tree. So it's a menzizii, and, and that is Pinus ponderosa. <laughs> Pinus ponderosa, ponderosa pine. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> I was I was in a, a coffee shop the other day, and I was talking to I, a gal came in to order a cake. <laughs> And she wanted a cake that was pine flavored. And I thought to myself, that sounds awful, actually. <laughs> and the gal said, I don't think I can do that. Isn't pine toxic? I informed her that no, pine's not toxic. It has a lot of terpenes in it and it has a lot of vitamin C, vitamin K, and vitamin A. Huh? People Everybody, the first ev question, is this plant toxic? Like, there's every, nothing about the pine tree that's toxic, is no, it? not even the root. I eat the inner bark, the cambium yes. layer, in the spring. Yes. I'll pipe, peel the bark off, and then I'll take that cambium layer, and it's kind of got a, a fatty texture to it. 
And sorry, my children are just climbing the tree as I'm talking about it. And it's very high in vitamin C, so I'll eat that in the spring. Um, in fact, it was a very, it was a staple food in early spring with um, tribes, native tribes. Let's see if I can. Did the cadmium do they just chew on, or does it disintegrate? I thought it was it, it does disintegrate in spring, but if you any time other time, it's not. My kids are feral because we spend a lot of time in the woods. And the monkey grab this. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, they're going to be homeschooled for a reason. They will not like to be between four, four walls. Like, they have ponies. I usually stick them on their ponies. In fact, I considered sticking them on their ponies today because then they'd be contained. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> the the cambium layer was said to taste like sheep fat. On a cool, cloudy day when the sap was running, the bark was removed from one side of the tree and the edible inner bark was scraped from the tough outer layer. It was then eaten immediately or roasted or, or, or stored in cool bags. The, um, the oil-rich seeds are also edible, so pine, pine nuts. Mm -hmm. These aren't as big as the what we know as pine nuts, but they're just as tasty. They'd have a little bit higher terpene content, so it's just a little more piney taste. Um, you can make needle tea out of them. And so back to that story about the cake. So I was talking to these folks, and they were like, oh, it's not edible. I said, well, yeah, actually, technically it is. And so they didn't want to do it. Then I got to thinking about it. It's like, I've got to try that. So I did. So I took a bunch of needles and I dried them and I powdered them and I put them in a vanilla cake <laughs> and I tried it. It's actually really good. It gives a really light piney taste, but the um, it's not bitter at all. I figured it would be bitter and taste awful, but it was quite good. So <laughs> that was my little story about the pine. Um, this is a dug fir. It has similar pop properties to the pine, but um, it's considered a little more palatable than the pine. The inner bark isn't as tasty, but um, the uh, the uh, the uh, needles are often used in teas and, as well. And let's see, dried sap was chewed to relieve cold symptoms. Sticky buds were chewed to heal mouth sores. Liquid pitch and soft inner bark can be used on cuts, boils, sores, and other skin problems. There were teas were made to made from the gum or inner bark to treat coughs. Young Douglas fir contains a lot of vitamin C, so it was used to treat scurvy. And the bark is a laxative. Oh, cool. Which one was that? Yeah, this is Doug fir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kill germs and oh. and uh, it's for salves for abscesses, rheumatoid, rheum, rheumatoid arthritis, arthritic joints, <laughs> and for aching backs. Oh, I didn't eat it, I just got the juice. So it's the new growth from this year. I would consider it such, personally, the bracken fur. Tastes good. No. <laughs> Those are. They're, they're rather astringent this time of year. They're not bad in the fall when they're not as highly concentrated. A little different. <laughs> Some inner bark. We're still in the sap stage here, so it's it's going to be a little stronger than it would have been a month ago. And so, what I'm going to do is take the outer bark that off. Brown stuff, right? Yeah, and this tree's probably going to die anyway because it's so close to the other tree. Okay. So this is the cambium right here. Oh, See yeah. how it's kind of chewy? Uh huh. Okay. And so take the bark off, and then you end up with this little reddish brown. Chewy thing it was a very piney at this junker and kind of astringent. Can you chew that? Mm -hmm. And it's very, you can definitely taste the terpenes, but you can sit there and chew on that. And it, it would, I think it would make you not be thirsty anymore. <laughs> right on. on. Here's a taste. Who wants it? I'll do some. This tree probably is not Mr. Who? You are so active that you feel so hot, right? Take a bump. Take a bump. Here, do it again. Different, isn't it? I like it. They're coming up the road to see. 
Okay, this is one of Swanee's favorite plants. This is called Ocean Spray. These flower buds will open up into big white plumes with a very, very uh, distinct smell to it. Um, in, the, in about two weeks, it'll Beautiful be open. Flower arrangements. Yes, and the old seed pod, I just dropped one, I don't know what it is. The old seed pods sometimes have the seeds left in them. They were often ground up into a powder and used for thickening stews. Um, they were the I seeds were eaten raw and yeah these they yeah, were eaten yeah, raw yeah. cooked and sometimes dried, and the ra mountain sp the ocean spray oh. uh, roots were used to make teas. So oh, yeah, for what? The leaves and dried seeds were boiled to make medicinal teas for treating flu. The inner bark was used as an eye wash because it's really mild. Okay. Um, oh. The bark tea was used as a tonic for. Uh, convalescence and athlete's foot and was taken to relieve internal oh, bleeding. Antifungal guys. It, the um, diarrhea upset stomach flu and cold. Some tribes used the flowers to relieve diarrhea and the leaves in a poultice for soothing sore feet and chapped lips. This is another one that's easy on the mu mucous membrane. Wow. Okay, the wood is extremely hard and common names were include, were include arrowwood and ironwood. The straight young shoots were used to make arrows, spears, harpoons, shafts. Larger branches were fashioned into tools um, such as digging sticks, bows, teepees, pins, fish, clubs, drums, canoes, paddles. The wood was reputed not to burn. For this reason, it was used for roasting tongs. Pioneers made wooden nails and Thompson tribe made wooden breastplates out of the ar armor out of ocean spray. So it's another just cool little plant. That's a good question. Um, I think that's not Mauritia, but they could, oh, this is a little, um, I think this is a little legume. This is a little vetch. Or a little sweet batch of some sort. It's probably a some for hybridized variety um, that was used probably in the hay fields and such. So a sweet batch. Um, most of them are not edible, and so I'm gonna pop over and just look up the edible and medicinal vetch. Vetch. Um, a common relative would be the American vetch. It, it's used. It has alkaloids that can attack the red blood cells of people who lack um, the enzyme glucose. Yeah, it's it's poisonous, but it's used in uh, livestock feed a lot because it's not poisonous to livestock unless it's wilted and then that concentrates the alkaloids. So um, this is this is this is probably um, just one of the little the little vetches. I hybridized variety. I'm not sure exact variety, but it is in the Fabaceae family. Again, this is penny cress or penny, penny royal. Young tender leaves were eaten raw in salad sandwich or as hors d'oeuvres, but they tend to be a characteristic of the mustard. <laughs> and um, it's too bitter and aromatic for most people to eat without one to two changes of water. The mature plants are strong tasting and seed pods have a peppery flavor, which is typical of the mustards. Why are we um, switching to Shepherd's Purse from Penny Royal? That, uh, that was a mistake. On, that was a Freudian slip on oh, me. because calling it Shepherd's Purse. This is Penny Crest. Penny, see, Penny Royal. Shepherd's Purse is something different. It's got heart-shaped pods. It's in the same family, but it's a capsilla, and this is a thapsus. So this this is Penny Royal. Um, Shepherd's Purse is something Swanee uses. I think she... Do you use Penny Crest in your stuff as well, or just Shepherd's Purse? Shepherd's Purse mostly. Yes. So in the same family. The same they're in the same family. Right. Yes, they're both in the mustard family. Oh, um, cool. This one's high in vitamin C and G, and it um, contains large amounts of sulfur. Um, it's uh, used as an antidote for poison. Um, let's see. Uh, some people reported they have health effects stim similar to that of sulfur and molasses. In some countries, young plants are eaten to harmonize the internal organs and brighten the eyes. The seeds have been used to treat ophthalmia, ophthalmia inflammation in the eyeball, and lumbago, rheum rheumatic pain in the lower back. Pennycrests have broad antimicrobial activity, and but their their high mustard oil content can make very irritating. Pennycrest is considered a stringent purifier, diuretic, stimulant, toxic, Tonic, not toxic, sorry. And also used for tra treating rheumatism. No, thank you. Um, this is not weed? Well, not Japanese not weed. It's a different oh. kind of not weed. It's also known as goose grass. Um, it's in the buckwheat family. Oh, really? Yep. Um, it's used, the the juice, is, juice is used to stop nosebleeds. Really? And Astringent. bleeding. Um, 
normally taken to relieve diarrhea and treat kidney problems. Really? High tannin content and astringency, so it's effective in treating these ailments. The extract made from oak bark is common knot wheat, and common knot wheat is a substitute for quinine. I did not know that. Really? It's a long history use of the knot weeds, including common knot wheat, which is used to treat various forms of cancer. Wow. This is, uh, that's the back side. So, uh, again, even if it had quinine in it, we probably wouldn't go to not weed. We'd probably go to grapefruit as, as opposed Correct. to because it's the higher, higher, higher concentration. Quality, higher concentration. Just because it's there doesn't mean it's highly concentrated. Right. <clears throat> Finny, pull your pants up, please. This is Oregon grape. All of this, um, most of this green stuff down here with the holly shaped leaves. Um, is Oregon grape. How do you describe those leaves? Um, prickly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're, um, they're uh, kind of a tough leaf, but uh, these are spring leaves, so they're you can make a tea out of these, or you can eat them raw because they're not as prickly. You can see some of the older leaves are... Um, Oregon leaf, right? Yeah, yeah Oregon, Oregon grape. Because it has a little grape-like berry. Um, the sour juicy berries were eaten raw in jellies. It's pretty tasty, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Or in <laughs> jellies, jams, tasty. or wines. Mm, mashed, sugar, mashed with sugar and milk, and they're said to make a very tasty dessert. The refreshing drink was made from the berries, sugar, and water. The very sweetened ju juice is to taste very much like grape juice, which it does, and it makes a jelly very similar to grape jelly. Wow. Mm. Uh, berry production r ranges greatly from year to year, and the leaves are used as a trail nibble, salad vegetable, and, uh, or they're sometimes simmered until tender when they're older. The roots contain an alkaloid called berberis, hence the berberis um, uh -huh. pens, uh -huh. um, which stimulate involuntary muscles. Roots were used to aid in delivery of afterbirth and relieve normal. constipation. Really? They were taken as cough medicine. So it's abortion They're... And a, and it can cause an abortion? No, it was deliver, deliver afterbirth. A, deliver after well, birth. Mm. But things that cause abortion do that, right? Yep, that you're oh, absolutely right. Their warning is them. pregnant women should not use this plant because right. it stimulates the uterus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the crushed plants are, have an antioxidant, anti antiseptic, antibacterial properties. They were used as medicinal teas, poultices, and powders for gonorrhea, syphilis, and healing wounds, and scorpion stings. The leaves were a tonic for, as a contraceptive or the treat, treatment for kidney troubles, stomach diarrhea, dysentery, rheumatism, and psoriasis, eczema, and present, persistent problems of the uterus. So it's just another all-around good plant. And the, one of the fun things is you take the root, you dig the root, and you shred it. Uh -huh. It makes a bright gold dye. Oh, that's cool. And you can dye wool or cotton. I've used it several different times. Mm -hmm. When I was making cinches, I was dyeing mohair with it. Okay. And it'd make a nice goldenrod <laughs> colored uh, uh, dye. Here's a bunch of miner's lettuce, right? Yep, yep, that is miner's lettuce, and there's some merry blue eyes mixed in with it. Oh. And it likes to grow around trees like that. It does. It likes heavily shaded, damp areas. And it'll grow into August that way until it dries up. And these little blue eyes, can you eat them? I don't know anything about the edible and medicinal value other than they're just, I just know their name. Merry blue eyes, the little the tiny blue bowl. What about the moss? What's that? The moss. Edible? Yes. Um, edible, but not palatable. You can eat it? You could. Raw, raw or you cook it? or you, Some mosses are edible cooked and raw. Some are not. Dave, no, you're not going to eat that. No, no, no. <laughs> and um, I know there's one called Range Magic, which is edible. Most of them are edible, but not palatable. There are a couple toxic Forget mosses. Forget that particular one's Good not job. toxic, but I don't know that it's that tasty. Because mm. it's just kind of, it's, it's roughish. Potentilla gracilis, or graceful sink foil, is that one. This one might have a silver on the back of the leaf. And that's, a, that's one of the um, positive IDs for this native one. There is a, there's another one. There is a um, introduced species. They have the same, we, we do have... Okay, graceful sink foil has a prominently compound leaf, so it's got, it's compound, oh, it's yes, and it's like your palm of your hand. Oh, um, that's what that means. They, they were frequently associated with spring bank clover roots, and they're often grown in the same habitats. Okay. The silverweed patches, they're also called silverweeds, since hence the, the back. Uh -huh. okay, 
were often owned by certain chiefs, especially among the Nucha Nulith, or the Kwaka Kwaka, well, okay. Well, yeah, like the clover roots, silver reed roots are of two types, short and curly roots near the surface, and the long fleshy tap roots were dug by the women in late fall and early spring and had to be steamed and cooked to remove their bitter flavor when raw. Once cooked, they taste similar to sweet potatoes, but still retain some bitterness. The silver weeds were second only to bracken rhizomes in importance as a root vegetable. The quaka waka quaka preferred them from the gnarly, gravelly soil. They put the short roots in the basket and coiled up the long ones, tying them in bundles. The roots were dried or stored fresh in cool places. According to the Quaka Waka Quaka, men cooked silver reed roots at the feast. They packed al alternative layers of the curly and long roots over red hot rocks and dried fr fern leaves in the tall cedar steaming box. They poured hot water on the roots, covered them with a mat, and waited until the mat sank down, indicating the roots had softened. The chiefs among the high-ranking persons ate the long roots and the commoners ate the curly roots. Leftovers from the silverweed feasts were taken home to the wives. Water could be drunk afterwards. The roots were also collected and boiled by the Haida, who drank the tea as a pur purgative. The roots mixed with other vegetables were used to, as medicinal preparations. The Kwaka Waka Waka um, boiled the roots and mixed them with fish oil and applied them as poultices. They pressed the roots and applied the juice and inflammation, inflamed eyes, and the common silver we described as silky silver appearance on the back. That I read, and he got really, he got really sick. He got really tired of the entire rat race, yep. and so he moved to the woods, okay. and he lived off what he could kill, what he could um, um, eat, and. Within two years, he was healthier than he'd ever been, and he had, was, had completely healed from his uh, whatever ailment he had. There's another the thing. It's the elimination of sugar. It's the um, body's allowing the body to clean itself. Right. And then the uh, hybridized plants that we eat as vegetables are often washed of nutrients. There's no nothing there. And they've been bred and bred and bred until Where they're not they're in not, the original. No, exactly. They've been what hybridized. God intended them to be. Yeah, and they might not be genetically modified, but they're not. They're hybridized to the point. They're hybridized for growth. They're hybridized for high production, but they're not hybridized for nutrients. They should be hybridized for nutrition, not ease of harvest or such. This cute little guy. So that it I, loses the nutrients oh, as it's hybridized. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And maybe even. The makeup of our human nature wasn't... Well, it doesn't allow... Um, it doesn't have the antioxidants that allows our body to clean itself. Mm -hmm. The antioxidants and the nutrients and the um, cellular support that you get from eating something in its natural form right. is high superior, more superior than to any vegetable you're going to buy or because in the store. Because we're, we're having the plant fixate the nutrients from this virgin... Well, not only that, this is an entire ecosystem. And because, okay, the trees make some nutrients available to this um, golden thread that makes nutrients available to this uh, pine grass that makes nutrients available to the spirea and this rose bush. So the symbiotic nature Absolutely. of this whole ecosystem they feeds work together. into the phytonutrients it's and the, the nutritional value of, of this plant. Even the electrical energy, the vital force mm -hmm. of the plant mm -hmm. that we assimilate when mm -hmm. we eat it. So if you really wanted to cure disease, come out here and forage, right? Mm -hmm. Forage Absolutely. from the earth. Absolutely. Okay, so this little guy right here is called Golden Thread. Take one of the seeds and eat it. It tastes like anise or fennel. It's, it's, a, it's one of those herbs, seasoning herbs in um, the uh, here. Mild. It's just kind of a mild caraway almost taste. Mm. It's a very That's tasty really little guy. Hey, funny. There's our arnica. This is Arnica cordifolia that we were talking about. This is the bloom. Pull it up for me, please. This is Hawthorne. I'm sure Swanee has talked about just this. a lot of time. Because yeah. it's one of her favorite plants. Yeah. Oh my because goodness. of its medicinal values. You know what? The guy was sitting on our uh, couch that had 50 over nothing for blood pressure, full blown heart attack, cold, clammy, passed out. 
and we'd given him cayenne and lobelia, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> he was starting to come back around, but his blood pressure wasn't coming up yet. So we gave him hawthorn. Yep. And before Doc could get his blood pressure taken again, he had blood pressure of 100 and, 102 over like 70. In, in a, what is that, like three minutes time? Mm -hmm. That's what Hawthorne does. Okay, so my dad's been in congestive heart failure for the last, um, since Je uh, December. Mm -hmm. And I started, I've started him, he's been on Hawthorne, but he's been on the tabulated form mm -hmm. of the powdered leaf and berries. I started him on the Strauss heart drops because it's something I could get him to take. Tinkster. Tincture, yeah. highly concentrated tincture yeah. recipe mm -hmm. from the 1800s, mm -hmm. and um, it's um, it's motherwort. It's just like your heart drops formula. Okay. It's motherwort. It's hawthorn. It's ginkgo. goldenrod, ginkgo. I want to say oregano and rosemary, but I'm not positive. The rosemary's in there. Um, and within a week, the swelling in his legs went from like this down to normal. And he had more energy to do things. Yay. And so he's stabilized to where he can function. And, yeah. I mean, it's like I told him. He goes, well, it says you have to be on him for a year. It's like how, I looked at him and said, yeah. how long do you want to be around, Dad? Yeah. And he calmed him right on down. <laughs> the um, fruits are rather seedy, mealy, and tasteless. They're eaten fresh or dried for winter use and could be were added to pemmican. They were used... For in deer fat or marrow and are rich in pectin and usually bo boiled in sugar to make jellies and jams. Mm -hmm. They steep to make tea, cold drinks, juice, or wine. Hawthorn flowers are famous for their herbal medicine and heart tonics, and they're equally effective on high blood pressure, weak heart, and gina pectoris, the reoccurrent chest pain in the left arm owing the ar articulosclerosis. Long loss of elasticity and thickening of the artery walls. Hawthorne is said to slow the heart rate, reduce blood pressure by dilating the large arteries and supplying blood to the heart by acting like a mild heart stimulant. However, gradual mild action must be taken for extended periods to produce noticeable results. Hawthorne tea has been used to treat kidney disease, nervous conditions, and insomnia. Dark colored hawthorns are especially high in flavonoids and have been steeped in hot water to make teas for strengthening connective tissues damaged by inflammation. The hawthorns were sometimes eaten in moderation to relieve diarrhea. Some tribes considered them the most con constipating and diets high in hawthorn have been recommended for weight loss programs and tea was made for the, from the inner bark to treat dysentery. So those are... Those are prickly, spiky things. On they them. are. They're thorns. actually full on thorns. But you can use they're thorns. You can use them as fish hooks as well. You, that's mm -hmm. how you identify between this and sarvus berry. <laughs> yes. Because they have between a what? Sarvus berry. It's got those big thorny things on them. Yep. They got and they're very sharp, and they so will fester really bad. It, if you you want to get the leaves and the bark and no. Leaves. When you harvest it, you want the blossoms. You want a few blossoms, no, no, fill your jar no, about half full of blossoms, no. you can cover it with alcohol, wait till the Look berries the mature and they'll turn <laughs> nice and black, and then throw the berries in, and then cover that with alcohol. The berries and the blossoms are yep. what you want, and you'll get a few leaves and that's okay. okay the leaves aren't so as strong as the berries, berries aren't as strong as the blossoms. If you pick these now, these will continue to dry and get dark? No. Can't pick them now. You have to wait till they mature on the tree to get all of your nutrients yeah. developed that you need. A tea, you're going to get about 60% of the nutrients out of it. Yeah. If you make a tincture, you get about 100%. Almost. Just really close. <clears throat> I got something else I want to show you attention. We've been harvesting these for years. And usually, see all these little flowers that haven't broken off yet? They have not formed a berry. Only three of them formed a berry. Usually you have a huge honking cluster of a whole bunch of berries every year when you go to harvest them. Why do we only have three? Lack of pollinators. Lack of pollinators? Look at them. The whole thing is only three, but there's another reason too. And one of the reasons is because of <clears throat> the contamination that we now have. Um, the soil microbes aren't healthy like they used to be, and the, the trees and everything is struggling to get their nutrients up. Well, if the plants are doing it, imagine what's happening with the people on this planet. That's my Absolutely. whole point. They're struggling. So we really need to get out and get as much of this kind of food as we can. Mm -hmm. Woe to the people in the cities, the Bible says. Wow. Country living is where God intended us to be. And there's a reason. So 
um, Christmas. It, it it even withstands kids. Yes, it does. Yeah. And what is it good for? It's good for, for mm -hmm. all of what I just said. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's good for treating jaundice, um, so fungal infections, um, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, skin sores, warts, rheumatism, uh, vitamin A, C. High, it's high in vitamin A and C. It was used for as a dusting powder for salves and um, more A than carrots. Yeah, and and to. Uh, help with healing sores and reduce itching. It sounds like it'd be really good to juice. Yes. It yes. probably would because yes. it's tart. It's uh, but it's it's the, good for the, the liver? leaves are. It's are, one of the four li best liver cleanses. So yes. you, you have dandelion, burdock, curly dock, curly dock. and uh, um, yeah. uh, red red clover. Red clover and yeah, so eat it in salads. Too. Juice and it. And this is your lamb's hey, quarter. Very edible. Tastes like spinach. It's yeah. one of my favorite plants. Mine to too. eat. Um, it's high in vitamins C, K, and A. Um, I don't know of many medicinal values so much as the edible values. I think we're going to have to go calcium. move our cars. I think so too. Plant plant and it's very calcium. high in calcium it's as well. The, plant, the one plant that is the highest in calcium. Uh, one cup of Come this on, steamed is 400 milligrams of calcium. And our minimum daily requirement is You can eat the whole thing, Swanee? Yes, yeah. the whole thing. The whole plant. It's seeds it was, and all. It was it's very here. nice tasting. You can eat it all. It's very rich. Yeah. You can eat the whole thing. Yeah, you can eat this one, bro. <laughs> Tastes good. Um, I did one once. These are Johnny Jump Ups pansies and... Yellow stream violet. Yeah, the yellow stream violets, the early blue violet. They're high in vitamin A and rich, actually, and vitamin C actually has more than uh, spinach. And the vitamin C, a half a cup can be equivalent to four oranges. Wow. So we don't have a violet here to look at. No, oh. well, we're gonna, this is the photo reference we have. It's just violets and pansies, they're same family. They have 4,000 parts per million salicylic acid, similar to aspen, really? so they're an anti wow. where do we find these out here? You will find them in underneath a uh, heavy overstore. You'll find them by the streams. Mm -hmm. We're not finding them because I think they're back where um, those hmm. they're logging. Because I know they're back there. That's one of the reasons I came to this particular spot. Come to my house and you'll find yeah, them. Yes, if, if you go to Swanee's house, you'll find them because she has a lot of them. Uh, violet plants can have a um, laxative effect and the flowers have a sig significant amount of rutinin. The uh, compound that uh, strengthens capillary blood, blood vessels, which can said, mm -hmm. and the the yellow ones are have a stronger laxative effect than the purple ones. They've been used to make medicinal teas for oh, bronchitis, really? asthma, really? heart palpitation, fevers, gargle service yeah, for relieving. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yellow stream yes. violets, yay! Relieving sores and throats, coughs, poultices for salves, lotions, treating bruises, rashes, boils, and eczema. Violets are reported to have hormone regulating action. Early blue violets were really? used by some women to ease labor. Ancient wow. claim that violet leaves will cure cancer has not been substantiated. However, animal studies have shown that the violet stimulate urination and are useful in treating rashes and skin problems. Violet roots were sometimes used to induce vomiting and poison victims. So the, the flowers and the leaves are really useful. If you want to vomit, eat the roots. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, um, they're and super. Yo, pansies, they have the same property. Pansies are a violet. The Johnny Jump Ups are a violet. You, everybody, most everybody knows the identification. Okay, that looks like a pansy. Well, that probably because it is. It has the asymmetrical um, flowers what and they're spring. Yeah. It, they're a spring. I'm Charmaine Vieira and I'm standing in an area of Spokane, Washington called The Zone. It is in this area that Spokane has its highest crime rate, poverty rate, suicide. Children in the sixth grade, many of them will not finish but drop out. There's severe food insecurity with children. One in five children will be hungry. It's in this area 
that I am collaborating with community stakeholders and organizations to bring an urban garden and children's cooking classes to expose these children to plant-based foods, some of which they will never see. This is an opportunity to impact the children as well as their parents as we teach them how to garden and how to take these foods out of the garden and turn them into tasty, healthy dishes. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please check out my website, www.eatmorerainbows.com to find out how you can be involved and how you can donate to help the people in this area of Spokane. Thank you so much for your support and God bless you.